Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. Today, I'm at my Good Shepherd Food Bank yard where almost all of my hives here are single brood chamber colonies. So that means when the honey comes off, it's very often the case that the single brood chamber is virtually empty of any sort of honey stores. And that means that if you, uh, you have a limited window during which to feed them, it's time to get on, get on with it. It's now, I think, about 8th or 9th of September, and it's, uh, I've completed my Formic Pro treatments. That's now finished, and so finally I can get on with feeding those bees. But to do that, I've got to take the honeys, honey off the hives. So, first of all, we have a quick look. I've got the uh, single brood chamber hives here, uh, and this left-hand side, for example, the pink uh, super there. The blue and the red will come off. They will have varying degrees of honey in them, depending on the strength of the colony. The one behind it, the red deep, will need to come off, and this one here, the green deep and the red honey super. As I say, there may be greater or lesser amounts of honey in each of those. Right now, the bees are pretty busy. There's a fair amount of flying activity, um, so I'm pleased to see that. A lot of that is bringing in pollen. I can't say I smell any goldenrod, but the goldenrod is certainly in flower. And uh, we're just coming up to the aster bloom. So it, uh, there's still a good chance of, of honey, honey flow, uh, natural honey flow coming in. But I need to make sure that those single brood chambers are full of honey, wall to wall. So I want to do it slowly at first. I'll be putting a gallon or two of medium strength syrup on these hives that I take the honey supers mm. off today. I'll have to come back for another trip to do the rest of the yard up. I, at best, I'll do half of the yard today. Um, but uh, what I'll do is then leave sugar syrup on it because when you take the honey off a single brood chamber hive, it's very often the case that there is no honey left in the brood chamber. And so you don't want to leave it with nothing there. And even if there is a bit of a honey flow on, you want to be sure that they can have some food. So I'm going to be putting hive top feeders on these hives as well. So I brought along some sugar syrup and some hive top feeders and uh, we will get on with it now. And uh, let's get ready to rumble. first priority is to get my smoker going really well because these are my Italian bees and this time of year no colony likes to be disturbed and we will most certainly be disturbing these girls today. Some smoke for the colonies I'll be working with. Okay, just a quick look at what I'll be using today. <clears throat> These are hive top feeders. Basically, I'll be putting sugar syrup in here. At this stage, maybe a gallon. They'll hold up to, oh, about three, sometimes maybe as much as four, I'm not sure, gallons. The bees go, this goes on top of the feeding area. The bees go up through this groove. They come up over here and down the well here. Let's see if we can open this up. A bit propolized. So just to see, the bees will come up this groove here, over the top and down there. And this prevents the majority of them from drowning. I haven't met a hived internal feeder apart from a a bucket feeder that doesn't drown bees. So this will allow bees to get sugar syrup right down to the bottom. Uh, works very, very well. Problem with styrofoam ones, I find, or any hive top feeder, as it gets colder, they work less and less well. Uh, so the bees are less likely to travel up and down that area to work as it gets colder. 
some designs are better than others and later in the season I'll be trying some other ones to show you. I'll be getting the bees out of the honey supers with my escape boards and my fume boards. It's a little bit cool for the fume boards to work but I'll be trying it anyway. Um, those that don't, I can't get off with the skateboards to start with, I mean with fume boards to start with, I'll leave in place with some skateboards and that will uh, be collected tomorrow or the next day. So. Thing. It's been uh, uh, about 11 days since I opened these hives up, so let's see if there's been any sort of signs of any honey flow in the meantime. Not a great deal, but at least in this hive, which is not particularly good, I can see the signs that they've been working these hives. adding something. There's not much in here. brood chamber. One thing I've got to check is that I don't have a brood above the queen excluder. One thing I found last time I harvested was that I have queens above and below my queen excluder and this may be because they superseded and the virgin got through the queen excluder. Um, it's hard to tell but uh, this is the first year I found several hives. I, I can find the occasional one or two where the where I've got queen in the upper upstairs brooch above the queen excluder. But this year I found it in multiple hives and that's a real pain in the neck because when that happens your escape boards do not work because the uh, pheromones of the brood, the brood bees will not leave the brood and so that is a real pain when that happens. I've got no brood up here, which is good. So the fume board should work pretty well on this. Just want to check and double check. But you can drive the bees off the brood with the uh, escape board, with the uh, fume boards, but not with the escape boards. It won't work with the escape boards. Okay, we've got a bit of honey here to remove. No brood to hinder things. So, let's start the process of getting them out of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the queen excluder out to make everything happen faster. look, see what we have down in the lower brood chamber, just to make sure, just to show why. Here's the outside brood comb. Here the outside brood comb's got a bit of honey in it, a little bit of brood, right to the outer edge. Some honey on the outside here. Second frame in, and there's lots of brood. There's some honey going in here, but lots of brood. Lots of cat brood there. Young larvae around it. I can tell by the weight, there's very little 
honey in here. And that's why it's so important that we uh, get this area, get this um, fed right away. There's enough food in here to keep them going for a week, but really we're looking to make sure they stay healthy and we don't want them stressed. We want them to rear that brood as fast as they can. We want the queen to continue laying for another few weeks. So we're going to make sure there's plenty of food coming in and then the uh, we're going to scale up the feeding with a higher and higher concentration of sugar syrup and that will get the queen uh, back to even get these cells back filled so basically as this some of this cap brood emerges right now i want some of it back filled with brood some of it back filled with honey but in a few weeks time i want any brood that emerges to be back filled with food Here. Keep on saying a skateboard when I mean fume board. We're going to be putting a fume board on here. I still use up the last of the B go that I've got. I really don't like the smell of. Fortunately, neither do the bees. The reason I try to uh, smoke the hives all on the same pallet is a disturbance to this hive causes disturbance to all of those hives. As you, you'll see, oh, look, there's sometimes some banging and some uh, scraping and and of course if you get an alarm pheromone coming from one hive the other hives tend to sense it as well so yes I'm careful I try to avoid ba banging and causing these to be alarmed but it's inevitable I can't pussyfoot around I've got to get on with my job and so on occasion I'm going to stir them up and I want to do the minimum amount. If I just stir up this hive, I want to try not to disturb the other hives any more than I need to. Yeah, most of these honey supers that are coming off are going to be coming off with very little honey in, maybe five to 10 pounds. Again, just making sure there's no brood in here. That'll help. I know. If I do have brood, I'm going to take brood and put it and leave some of these hives as more than a single brood chamber. Pretty much if there's no brood in the middle super, there's uh, middle frames, it's unlikely to be much in the outer frames. Last one I'll be putting the skateboard on for now. For this one I'll use the other one, the Be Quick. Oh. 
more of almonds. That goes. Set the same thing up over here. We've got through, these have all got their fume boards on, get these out of those honey supers. And now these have all got a feeder on, which I haven't fed yet, so we'll be adding the food before we leave. Not give them straight. And so the fume boards seem to be working pretty well at the moment. So let's start uh, looking through these hives. Let's see if we can just keep on doing the same thing.
yards, a lot faster than I thought I was going to. But the problem is, and the reason is, it's because there's so little honey in it. Uh, that's the way it goes. We've already taken about 500 pounds of honey off this yard and hope that some of these empties we put on would get filled up, but realistically, if you can pick up supers with two fingers, there's yeah, not, not enough honey to worry about. But we'll still drive the bees out. A little more honey down below. Yeah, definitely more honey there. Considerably more in here.
Okay, to see where we are at the moment, I have now run out of hive top feeders. I've put them all on each hive. So every hive I've managed to do, which is 15 so far today, I've got a hive top feeder on, which I'm about to fill. These supers here are so empty that it's not worth even spinning out a pound or two of honey. This, if any, if there's anything in here, it's ounces per box, and so they'll stay here, be robbed out. There's only honey in maybe three out of four boxes that I've taken out of here. Some are totally empty or darn near it. Others have 20 or 30 pounds in. So I've got these boxes here with something covering them just to make sure they don't start a robbing frenzy. And I've got a few in here at the moment where they're more likely to get robbed out. So I'm going to be loading all of those into here just before I leave so they're not getting robbed out. So what I have to do now is pick up all the spare bits and pieces here. I will come back tomorrow or later on today with another six feeders and some more feed and do these last six hives that have not been touched yet. Not much honey in them. Very disappointing honey flow. So anyway, I'm going to load up these feeders now so you can watch how some of that is done. So, bees can come up into this area here. You can already see them starting to come up here. And we're going to fill, put some sugar syrup in here. I've got enough sugar syrup to put roughly two gallons into each one. I may not get to do as much as that. So I want to make sure I've got enough. gasket to stop bees getting in through the cracks.
this area full of bees. Ideally, these pallets would be nice and level. They're not. Well, that's it for 15 out of the uh, 21 hives here right now. Be back later to do the rest. Uh, all fed, consolidated where necessary. One or two of them are in double brood chambers now and uh, most in singles. Checked, they've all got queens and they're now being fed. They're going from having maybe one or two frames of food into their hives to having uh, two gallons above them, which will gradually start to uh, displace brood in the brood chamber. A lot of them have empty frames in the brood chamber too. So there we have it. A lot more emptied out than I thought, so I've made a bit of progress, but uh, won't be that much honey extracting to do. So that's the way it goes. Beekeeping's hard business. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.